Good morning and good afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our August user group. We apologize for any confusion last week, so thank you for making some time to uh, reschedule and join us this morning. So we've got quite a bit uh, planned for you today, so let's jump in and uh, cover our usual housekeeping. So as you know, uh, we use Zoom to, uh, to present our webinars. Recordings are all available on our blog. So you can visit the blog and the blog post for this month will be available today, Thursday. So probably by Monday next week, uh, your time, we will be able to access that on our blog, but we'll send you an email anyway. So you'll have access to that. And of course the Q&A, as is usually the case, please feel free to use the Q&A throughout the meeting, just be aware that everybody can see those questions, and which is good because then you can upvote. So if they're asking the same question you wanted to ask, go ahead and upvote that. Uh, you can also uh, use the chat function if you'd like to ask a question of myself or one of our uh, facilitators. So we'll be more than happy to answer those for you. All right, let's jump in. And well, I should introduce myself for those that haven't joined us before. My name is Derek Bell, the, uh, the host for this uh, webinar, and we run these each month. So uh, once you subscribe, which you've done by registering for the user group, uh, you'll receive information from us each month to come along and join us. And if you've got any input for topics, we'd love to hear from you. So please reply, reply to any of those emails. They all come to me. And uh, I'd love to hear from you as to what you'd like to have presented and topics you'd like covered. So please feel free to uh, provide some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. All right, our agenda for today. So which is it? Is it a welcome campaign or is it an onboarding campaign? That's the first question we'll answer. We're then gonna dive in and have a look at your audience and really trying to understand who that audience is and why you're trying to communicate with them. Then we wanna explore a topic around asking the new subscribers to do something, something of high value. And we'll expand on that for you and introduce you to five particular strategies to help with the welcome campaign. We'll then look at a welcome campaign that we run at uh, Marketing Cube. So you can have a look at that just as one example on a campaign canvas and some of the various considerations that you might want to think about as you're designing your campaign. And then we have some update information for you for release 22C, uh, which is underway at the end of this month for everybody. And I think that's some are at the end of or the beginning of September. So in the next two to three weeks, everybody will be on release 22C. Okay, so first question, you know, um, what is it? Is it is it a welcome campaign or is it an onboarding campaign? Sometimes these terms are used a little interchangeably. So what we wanted to do is try and expand on that and uh, just get some clarity in relation to what we're covering today. But it's important, I think, to first of all, try and understand, well, where in the journey, so where in the the buyer's journey, are you likely to be initiating uh, a campaign or something like this to, to help people learn more about your organization and what it is that you do? So if we look at a, a, a sample buyer's journey, and this of course will differ for every organization, but if we look at that awareness stage, consideration, purchase, obviously once they purchase, and this is probably where the difference comes in, right? So a welcome campaign by our definition and by others, I think, is certainly one where an individual comes into your database for the first time. So when they first expose themselves to your brand and you're in a position to know who they are and have a little bit of information about them, well, that would be a good place to start from a welcome campaign. The onboarding campaign typically refers to somebody who has actually purchased. So they've completed a transaction of some port, some sort. Now, they could have purchased something from an online store. They could have purchased a university degree. Uh, they could have purchased a, a brand new uh, BMW. They could be a whole range of things. They could have purchased, you know, a hundred thousand dollars worth of consulting uh, from your firm. So now they're a uh, a client uh, or a customer, and so that process becomes a little bit different. But what we want to try and understand is from that welcome campaign, where in this stage do we want to drop them, uh, drop in a, a campaign and actually welcome them to your organization. So we want to make that seamless. And hence the point of the jigsaw is they're kind of bringing those stages together. And so we can sort of seamlessly identify the right place and the right time to kick off that particular piece of communication. So expanding on that point, where in the journey, there are a range of different things to consider. If you think about it from a welcome campaign point of view, 
it's really an introduction to your brand, okay? So whether you're, again, a university, a consulting firm, car manufacturer, whatever the case may be, uh, what we want to do is introduce people to your brand. Now, there are certainly some, some interesting stats and, and figures that help us understand how different age groups and different generations want to engage with brands. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go further through the session today. And it may be part of that welcome campaign is, you know, how would you like us to help you? Uh, I always like to think about the university, the prospective university student. They've probably got loads of questions. And universities generally are really good at, at facilitating processes to help answer those questions. So during COVID, we saw a huge escalation in webinars uh, as one way for people to do that. But of course, then there's um, open houses or open days where universities will throw open the doors of the campus um, and invite people to physically come into the campus. And again, through COVID, we saw even hybrid uh, experiences there, which were great for the international team uh, within the marketing departments of those universities, because all of a sudden, they were able to offer this fantastic experience um, virtually without the need for individuals to fly. And when they couldn't fly, there really wasn't a lot of options. So it was good. It really helped to uh, propel that concept of a hybrid event uh, into uh, that part of that whole welcome experience. So in that welcome campaign, you probably also want to, they've, they've probably come into your database with a specific uh, exercise in mind. Maybe they've downloaded some content, perhaps they've expressed interest in a particular course of study or a particular service that you provide. Um, and there may be complementary things that you would share with them. And so it's a good way to think about other subscriptions that you could offer them. And thought leadership, again, depending on your industry and what you do, but certainly thought leadership is, is a good way to help build credentials uh, of who you are. If we look at the onboarding campaign, probably a little bit different, right? So it's now post-purchase. It's a new client. It's a new student. It's opportunities for cross-sell, upsell. Um, it's teaching them how to, or educating them, uh, how to engage with you as a firm. So if I've got a query or a question, or I have a support query, how do I do that? Is it through email? Is there an online portal? Do I talk to my account director? How is it I engage with the company and with the brand? And also potentially it's an opportunity to introduce the new customer to specific individuals within the, within the business or within the university as well. So the welcome and onboarding campaign is slightly different in their objectives, but our focus today is very much on the welcome campaign. So these, uh, some of these points that we've captured here are from a blog post uh, from Chad White. Chad is the head of strategic research, I think it is, at Oracle. Um, Chad's published his, uh, you've possibly heard of Chad and, and maybe even seen him speak at different Oracle events over the years, um, but he's a, a great speaker and, and uh, has done a lot of uh, excellent thought leadership in relation to marketing automation at all levels, B2B, B2C, et cetera. So these are some of the points that he pulled out. And so from a welcome campaign point of view, it's about that first purchase. Uh, it's about what makes your company, your products and services special. And so what I've got there in the brackets are the strategies that you might be applying at different points. So learning about our most popular features okay so if somebody's looking and expressed interest in a particular product or service then maybe it's about really emphasizing the different points and the value that can be presented by that particular product um, if it's a customer again it could be about setting up an account what that looks like uh, capturing more information about that particular individual, people's preferences, their interests. And so that one very quickly becomes a marketing automation piece and an eloquent sweet spot when you think about uh, developing preference centers. So instead of just simply people clicking on emails and reaching a window that says, okay, yep, great, you're unsubscribed, thank you very much. Let's give them the ability to control the type of information they get from you. Um, now, of course, that's hopefully not the first time the person sees that preference center. Let's make sure we get that to these people as early as possible. So from a welcome campaign point of view, definitely welcome and send out that email and then invite them, invite them to do more. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of those things here shortly. Maybe there's loyalty programs. Um, 
<laughs> if you're in finance, maybe it's your private label credit cards. Um, you're signing up for additional emails from different departments on other topics that could be of interest. Um, expansion, uh, are there sister brands to think of that could be a, a worthwhile introduction? Are there mobile apps, social media, refer a friend? Uh, all of these different themes uh, are worthy of consideration and, and unique to your individual business, obviously. But uh, just wanted to give you some ideas there. So in the context of a welcome campaign, I just wanted to try and get a little bit of a gauge uh, from you. And um, okay, so I've created a poll and now Zoom's telling me it's not available. Okay, so apologies about that, guys. I can't, I can't capture that information from you. But really what I was trying to gauge, and maybe you could use the, the Q&A or the chat if you wanted to, to drop in, just curious as to who's got their... Um, who has a welcome campaign that's in place today. So maybe you could say, you know, in place. Um, another one would be that you're considering it, um, looking at a welcome campaign, or perhaps you're not interested. And, but I suppose you're here on the webinar today. So you're probably interested at least in, in the webinar. So yeah, be curious to understand um, where you're at in relation to welcome campaigns. But let's, let's soldier on. All right, so the first key point that we really need to think about from any welcome campaign is defining the audience. So who is it that we're actually trying to engage with? Let's jump in and look at that one. So with the welcome campaign, you've got that one chance. This was you know, some of the comms that we put together to help promote this session or this webinar today was really around that language that you do. You have one chance to make an outstanding first impression. And so we want that first impression to be simple, elegant um, and fast usually is what's needed. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get a little bit hung up on, on how good the technology is and what the technology can deliver, but we really need to put ourselves in the shoes of the customer or the client or prospective client or prospective student, whatever the case may be. You know, what do they want? And they usually want fast, simple, elegant, clean, efficient they're all the types of things they're usually wanting to do right so they don't want to have to spend hours navigating around your website to kind of subscribe or you know if they're genuinely interested we want to make it as easy as possible uh, for them to not just find information but proactively uh, engage with you through some type of a form submission where there's an exchange of value them giving you information and you hopefully in turn being able to return with with something of value for them so we need to get some clarity around who the audience is, and there'll be a whole range of ways that you will do this. But at the end of the day, um, we need to think about the long-term goal and heading towards a marketing qualified lead. So who qualifies to enter your welcome campaign? So who is it you're actually targeting? So there'll be a whole range of people uh, that you're probably looking to engage with, and depending on who you are on the call today. Uh, it could be around prospective students. So we could be talking higher education. Um, it could be business professionals. <clears throat> and within business professionals, there's probably a whole swag, right? There's the C-level executive, you know, mid-level executives, and then maybe perhaps managers, individual contributors. And depending on how you go to market and how you present your products or services, then the way you talk to the C-level executive is probably quite different to how you might talk to the manager. So if that's the case, we need to think about the very early stages of that welcome campaign, that perhaps things like job category uh, are a good way to sort of be able to get that information so that you can differentiate your audience uh, as you're progressing. If you're a sporting club uh, or involved in community-based activities, et cetera, fans or members, Whatever the case may be there, again, there'd be all sorts of tiers. I suppose you'd have members who are paying to be a member. You might have honorary members. Uh, you may have past members that you're trying to reactivate, et cetera. Um, there's all sorts of people in that, that area. I suppose you'd also probably be looking at sponsors mm -hmm. as well. So those who are financially contributing potentially to a team. Then... The last one, and look, there's probably loads more, by the way, <laughs> but uh, you know, maybe it's families, it's your know, mom, dad at home, it's community groups, it's children, not that you'd be marketing to children specifically, I'm sure, but probably to community groups, et cetera. So the well, first thing we want to do is be able to identify and be quite specific, not just simply create a single welcome campaign, 
that is just generic for everybody because everybody's a little bit unique, but we probably want to take more of a persona type view. Now, how do these people get into Eloqua? That's probably the first key thing to really try and understand. And as I sat down and sort of started to brainstorm entry points, um, I wasn't sure the slide was actually really going to be big enough <laughs> to capture all of them. So these are just a, a range, okay? So if you consider all of these different points, the CRM would be through integration, Social could be through through apps that you're integrating within Eloqua. Uh, the website, again, you might have form submissions there, integrated webinars, things like Zoom, for example. Events, now events might be in-person events or they could be webinar type events, uh, depending. So we've got to work out how we get that information from those events into Eloqua. Preference centers, people come to your website and click on subscribe and bring them to a subscription center or preference center, depending on the language you want to use. Um, and they come directly into Eloqua. More subscriptions, the contact us, trade shows, open days or on-campus type events for universities. Lists, you'll notice there I've got lists in brackets, sort of not ideal. Um, generally, for most marketers today, certainly my experience is sort of lists is something we tend to stay away from when we start to think about opt-ins and permission to email people, all those sorts of things. Um, and don't forget partners, okay? So partners can be another way to people may eventually come into your system. Now, as soon as they come into Eloqua, most of you uh, would probably then at some point have some rules in place to define when they go through the CRM. Now, of course, some come from the CRM, that's okay. Um, but if we want to then look at the idea of pushing them back uh, from a marketing qualified lead point of view, then maybe it's a mix of lead scoring. Um, and you'll certainly find some blog posts uh, on our site that talk a little bit more about lead scoring and developing those marketing qualified leads. So we can see loads of channels. So, you know, you start thinking attribution and all those sorts of things. That's great. But let's, <laughs> let's focus on our welcome campaigns. So one of the points that Chad makes in his blog is don't treat that welcome email as a sign-up confirmation email. It has to be more than that. It can't, if somebody's gone to the trouble of actually providing information to you, then it's great. You certainly want to send them a confirmation email, but don't let that be the stopping point. Okay, what happens after that? And so that's going to depend, I'm sure, um, on the information that you have. So this is a, a quote that I pulled out of the, the blog post from Chad. So that, you know, the days of batched welcome email sends are long, long gone. And I think most of us would obviously agree with that. But welcome emails today, are a, they're more like a transactional email, right? So um, the point he's making here is that, and certainly this is my impression and my experience as a consumer, when I go to a website and I fill in a form, whatever it might be, an inquiry, contact us, uh, whatever it is, I, I want to get an email uh, to confirm, at least at bare minimum, to confirm that the information that I've provided in that online form has in fact been received. A confirmation page is great uh, on the website. That's good. But I want in my inbox evidence that I've actually provided you with some information. And that way I know that you've also received that same information. So don't disappoint or confuse them. Trigger your uh, initial welcome email immediately. Okay, so get, get the process started straight away is the advice that we have from Chad. So in his blog, he goes through five specific types of um, principles um, to, to apply. And your welcome campaign could be a blend of these five, uh, depending on the type of product or service that you're looking at or selling. Um, you may choose one, but that's okay. Let's have a look at these. So the promotion email. So really what we're trying to do here is to drive a purchase through incentives or product promotions. It probably feels a bit B2C uh, in, in this type of uh, scenario, but that's fine. Promotion can work, especially if it's the first purchase. So that means you're going to need to have some data in place that tells you that this is, in fact, uh, the first purchase. We have a client here in Australia uh, who works in a consumer type of business that's um shouldn't be too specific but it's something that we all need <laughs> and we all use on a regular basis um and that that product that they have generally expires within about two years and um so for them it's very important to capture that particular individual 
communicate with them, talk about care of the product, uh, explain to them that they can also help that individual with other products that are of similar ilk that uh, may also be helpful within the house and the car and other uh, areas around the home and certainly for business as well. And so this is a really important one for them. They apply this one today. They have these campaigns in place today. Education. So here, and this one is probably good for the B2B, uh, well, it's good for everybody, but for the B2B, um, it's really about deepening that brand affinity, right, and the loyalty by educating the new subscriber about your brand's history, your products, your services, your values and social causes. I talked earlier about different expectations from different age groups or different generations. And this is the point here that Chad is making. You know, he's saying, especially millennials and Gen Z, they really want to feel good about the companies that they buy from. And so this, this approach of education can really pay dividends. There's a shoe company that I discovered. I fell victim to their Facebook advertising. Um, I can never remember the name of the brand, which doesn't bother me because they're always in my inbox. So if I want to buy a new pair, I just simply go through my inbox. Karuma, I think it is, C-A-R-I-U-M-A. Um, I believe they're a Brazilian-based firm, um, but most of the communications I get seem to come out of Singapore. Great shoes, by the way, super comfortable, but their whole story um, is what kind of got me. They're actually a vegan shoe. I never knew that there was such a thing. Um, I'm not personally a vegan, uh, but I love the fact that these shoes are environmentally friendly. They arrive in a box. The courier box that it arrives in is the box that the shoes are in. So it's not a box delivered inside another box. So immediately there's a 100% reduction or 50% reduction maybe in the, in the number of boxes that are needed. Um, they plant two, or they tell me they plant two trees in the Amazon rainforest for every pair of shoes that I buy. Um, so I feel good about that purchase. It's beautifully presented. If I need to return the shoes, I can actually use the box that they came in. Um, this special adhesive tape, etc. So I rip it open, but then there's tape and I can reseal it and send it right back. So that one box um, has quite a life, which is kind of cool. So it makes me feel good about that purchase. And I think that's the point here that Chad is trying to make. You know, you're wanting to deepen those feelings um, with a brand and have an affinity for a particular brand. I've also told a lot of other people, like I'm telling you, about that particular brand. So I suppose it really does work. Profiling. Uh, so this is really gathering more information. And we'll talk a little bit about progressive profiling as well, because that's a really important part of this exercise as well, that in the, the process of building out your welcome campaign, there hopefully will be opportunities for people to share more information about themselves as they complete forms to access information or thought leadership that you're, you're offering them. And so profiling is a great way to do it. And of course, with, with Eloqua, the progressive profiling uh, is what you need. So what we need to do is we need to be really smart about the questions we're asking at these various points and making sure those questions are questions that we will actually be able to do something with and to tailor the experience for that particular individual further, but also be able to provide good information to the sales team as we present them with marketing qualified leads. Expansion, so connecting the new subscriber through additional channels. So it could be as you look at different social channels, uh, maybe there's direct mail type catalogs, there are all, a whole range of channels, obviously, that we can meet with people and an omni-channel approach generally is always the best approach. So the more opportunity they have to engage with your brand and the, the more valuable that customer tends to be. So we have a customer we're working with at the moment who has about 100 and 20 stores around the country and um, they're really trying to get their Google reviews up and, and running. So we've been looking very closely at the individual Google accounts for each individual store, knowing when a client comes in, I think they're using NetSuite to, to manage their contact database that connects into Eloqua. So NetSuite is smart enough to know when there's been a recent transaction, um, whether that's a brand new client, for instance, in their world or a customer in their world, um, and then trigger very quickly, uh, um, thank you for purchasing and welcome. Um, could you possibly give us a review on Google as well? So uh, that's something exciting. Chances are in the next few months, you may even get an email from me asking you to do exactly the same thing for us, but uh, just keep an eye out for that one. Number five. So 
Evangelism. Okay. So <laughs> referring friends or colleagues. So this one in different markets around the world, and uh, certainly from a GDPR point of view for our European friends, um, and certainly here in Australia, and I understand the US is a little bit looser on this one. Um, this one can be a little bit problematic. It's not difficult to do. It's certainly very easy to do, and a lot of customers globally have done this for a long time. Um, but as different markets have uh, become a little bit more strict in relation to opt-in laws and declaring and, you know, basically it's me taking a friend's email address and giving it to you uh, for you to email them. But um, for many jurisdictions, that's a problem because my friend didn't actually opt in. I've given you their email. And so that becomes problematic in some jurisdictions. But if it doesn't, um, then absolutely Eloqua can help you facilitate that process. You want to think about things like double opt-in, those sorts of things are probably quite smart. Being able to tell my friend that it was Derek that gave you their details, et cetera, those sorts of things. And you can do all of that. That's not a problem, but uh, just something to be aware of. All right. I'll just have a quick check here of Q&A. No, we're looking good. Please, again, if you do have any questions, please drop those in and we'd love to uh, answer those for you. Okay. So what could this look like on a campaign canvas? Now, many of you uh, who have subscribed to the Eloqua user group will have in fact been through our onboarding campaign. And so I'm gonna show you that canvas here in just a moment. It's in two parts and I'll explain why it's in two parts. But um, the key thing here as with any welcome campaign is to start with the audience and the campaign objectives. So once you've done that, then you can start to map out the experience on the canvas. I, I generally find it much easier to do my brainstorming on a campaign canvas versus on a whiteboard it just i don't know it just works easier for me if we're in a room i can put the canvas up on the big screen uh with the team and we can kind of work out and uh, develop what it is that we want to do and the experience that we're trying to deliver but having some clear objectives up front as to what you want to achieve with the welcome campaign what do you think the person wants to receive from you how can you add value to what they're doing what's also going to add value to you as an organization and you are you know is marketing qualified leads the objective out of the back end so let's jump in and we'll have a look here sorry can you let me just focus on these things so start with your audience and campaign objectives and this is just a quick revisit of some of those points from chad so are we making a, a welcome campaign that is purely educational? Are we going to drop in some offers throughout that process? And by offers, I don't mean necessarily products uh, or services. It could be thought leadership, for instance. So things that are of high value to uh, the client, but easy for you to provide. Um, yeah, are there cross-sell, upsell opportunities? You know, what's the duration of the campaign? Is it going to be a two-week exercise, a three-month exercise? If it's a three-month exercise, what sort of frequency are we looking at? Are we looking at every two weeks, every week, et cetera? Once you do that mapping, then you start to get a better idea of your content uh, and what your content needs to be across that process as well. And depending on, again, the type of organization you are, will it be personalized? Will it come from the brand or will it be from an individual? Um, could it be from an account director or somebody that, that manage a, manages a particular market, all those sorts of things. So things to think through, because again, that will impact your, uh, your comms a little bit. But let's jump in and have a look at a campaign canvas. So here in Eloqua, and I'll zoom in here in just a moment. Make that a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Okay. So what I've done here is uh, built out two canvases. And the reason we've done that is that we essentially have two groups of people who are coming into this particular campaign. We have prospects. Those are people who are not yet customers of Marketing Cube or clients of Marketing Cube, uh, but are definitely clients of Oracle as Eloqua clients. So that's one group. And then the other group are then Marketing Cube's customers. So these are people who we have a commercial relationship with. And so you'll notice um, the shared filter that's applied here is are they a customer? So across, across the top, you'll see multiple entry points for people to come into the particular campaign. Um, something that we do here is we add them to a shared list. And this, this shared list, basically, at the very point, this beginning point, we add them to the shared list. 
And on the second campaign canvas, at the very end, once that campaign is concluded, we remove them from that shared list. And so occasionally what I will do is use that shared list as an exclusion in some campaigns that we might be running. So if we've got people who are going through the, uh, the, the welcome campaign, then what we'd like to do is just sort of back off and, and maybe just hold off with any other invitations to other different types of webinars. Obviously, we'll always include invitations to the user group. That's why they subscribe. But, uh, but it's helpful sometimes to be able to use that as an exclusion for other things. It's a nice and simple thing to do uh, for your campaign. Um, we also apply some a join date. So we use uh, Eloqua's form capability and programs to apply a join date. And you'll notice that on some of our communications, you'll see that you've been a, a member since, usually just under the hero image on most of the emails that we send you. Um, we do a little bit of contact washing machine to trigger off a few different things. And then basically this becomes the confirmation email that the person receives. So it's sort of a welcome, good to have you with us. This is what you can expect over the next few weeks. We'll talk about this, this, and this, et cetera. And so from there, we push them to another campaign, which is campaign B in this process. Very original naming, right? Part A and part B, but it makes it nice and simple. So, all right. So essentially all flowing in from the other campaign that you can see right there and you can see the numbers all floating around there so this is obviously live now essentially what's happening is down the left hand side are the different communications that are sent to our prospective uh people and you'll notice here that we've also got those who have registered for a user group and for those who have not registered for a user group so how do we do that so we use a template every month. Uh, we access a template to create the form for the registration of the user group. And in that process, one of the key things we have is a shared list. And that particular shared list is nearly eight years old or at least seven years old. And it's simply called all time user group registrants. Very simple. And so that is our source of truth for all time for anyone who has ever registered for a user group. And so what we're trying to do here is the messaging in this one is, well, here's our first topic, blah, 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 blah. And then it'll very subtly say, hey, it looks like you may not have had a chance to actually register for a user group yet. So we'd love to have you come and join us live. So please come along, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you get the, get the routine there. And so, then the other things that we're doing here is we're constantly checking, are they a customer? So the way that works for us is that people will come in, even if they're a customer, they may register for something or subscribe. So we're constantly monitoring uh, the CRM, um, looking at new leads that have been created. So this is something I do every morning. Uh, only takes a few minutes, which is good. Um, and if I spot a brand that is a customer, I then quickly convert them. Etc. So eventually they'll move over to be a prospect. So while most will start in this area and they'll all move across, well, not all, but <laughs> a good portion of them will move across here to a customer theme uh, for the welcome campaign. So again, just slightly different type of messaging uh, in relation to the way we talk to people and present different ideas. But as with any type of nurture or welcome campaign from a um, from a design point of view of the experience, you can see it's quite repetitive. So you can see the duration, we're sort of waiting a week between each one, for instance, um, checking to see if they've opened or not opened and sort of delivering information as it goes through. And then we sort of finish off down here and here's that, that final uh, shared list where we remove them from that shared list. So that um, just, uh, as I said, that's just our current campaign member. Uh, shared list. And like I said, I like to use that from an exclusion point of view sometimes just to pull back on some of the different emails. So that's just one example of a campaign canvas and using different filters to answer certain questions, just qualify people further as they go through. Uh, and you'll see that in not every single one of these communications, but in some of them, uh, we're inviting people to access different types of content, hopefully giving us a little bit more profile information about people. Uh, some of you on the call have probably accessed the single city event guide. Um, that's something that you uh, hopefully find helpful. But there you go. So that's just a, an example of one particular campaign canvas or two um, that you could use potentially to work through. 
So the hack this month is not so much a hack in the traditional sense of a hack, but really just a reminder, and it sort of made sense really in the context of uh, welcome campaigns, is to really think through your use of progressive profiling. Now, the key thing that I've seen, the way I see this working the best for customers is, well, let me tell you what they shouldn't do, okay? What they shouldn't do is start every time with a brand new form and then have to drag in their email, their first name, their last name, then if they remember, they'll drag in progressive profiling and then they'll be looking around thinking, okay, what are the, okay, yeah, we want that, that, and then just adding a bunch of questions, okay? The most effective use of progressive profiling that I've seen used, and we certainly do this ourselves internally, is the use of form templates. So do the thinking up front, think about the questions that are needed. If we're passing marketing qualified leads to the sales team, what is it we want to know? And um, based on what you want to know, they're the things you want to drop in to your progressive profiling. So as you then use this particular form for as a template for four or five different camp, um, parts of your campaign, then you're building a more robust profile of people as you go through. But if you have to stop and think every single time that you need to build a form as to you know, what are the questions I should put into progressive profiling, it just doesn't happen, okay? It's all too hard, and we just go back to first name, last name, email address, maybe company name if we're lucky, and we just get on with it, okay? Let's let's use the technology and deliver a much richer experience uh, for people. So the whole point of progressive profiling is it does help build that profile data, and that's a key part of the exercise that you're trying to achieve, I think, um, with a welcome campaign. So the best application, as I've said there, is to create templates. It can sometimes mean multiple templates, right? Because you have different types of events that you run or different types of campaigns that you run, sorry. So let's have a look at those here in a moment and sort of think about that a little bit further. But the key thing is determine the profile data that you need to make a marketing qualified lead. So th that can't be done in isolation as a marketing team. We can't sit in our little ivory towers thinking we know what's best. We need to go and talk to the sales team, have a chat with them and just ask them, what do you need to know? You know, for some organizations, uh, a cell phone number or mobile phone number is fundamental. If, if you're as marketers going to send a lead over to sales and there's no phone number, that's of no use to some salespeople. They have to be able to pick up the phone and call the person. So let's go back to our progressive profiling and make sure that you know mobile phone is something that we we drop in there as well and capture at some particular point. One example. Um, use that form in future campaigns. Okay, save it as a template. Use it and then reap the benefits of it. The other, the, look, I'm sure everybody's done it. We've all taken an old form and um, gone save as and. And you start to change a few things, you hit save and you get these error messages. Now, these error messages may as well be written in Egyptian code sometimes. Um, they're not overly descriptive. You really have to have pretty good solid experience with that like, to be able to figure out what some of those error codes are telling you. So, and that comes about because you're changing things, you're removing dependencies, you're adding new things, et cetera, and, and the form gets confused essentially. So all of that pain can be gotten rid of if we simply use templates to, to go through that process. Now, of course, there'll be different form templates that would make sense. Um, and we've certainly done this ourselves. So we basically have ours broken down to event registration. So that would be an in-person type event because the things we ask, the questions we ask, like dietary requirements and those sorts of things are different for an in-person event. Accessing thought leadership is another one as well. And that one will differ slightly, probably based on each individual piece of thought leadership. But from a template point of view of a form, the fundamentals would be the same. Then webinar registration, again, slightly different to the in-person event, uh, still giving you opportunity to ask a whole range of questions. And then subscriptions. And maybe you've got various subscriptions that you're inviting people to to subscribe to. So you may end up with a few different types of templates, but at least these become a baseline uh, for you and you can build in your progressive profiling into each of these templates. It's so much easier generally to access a template, bring it down, and if you need to remove something, it's very easy to do that. The hard part often is, is, is remembering to add something to a form. Okay, so have a think about that and hopefully that will uh, make life a little bit easier for you. So let's just quickly have a look at the design editor, the form design editor that is. And just quickly, if you've not seen progressive profiling or something you've not played with, 
uh, let's have a close look at what it looks like. So again, this is um, this is actually the September user group uh, registration form. So you'll you'll receive this. You'll get a sneak peek. There you go. You know it's all about the campaign canvas next month. Um, but this is it right here. So it's highlighted in blue. And uh, the controls that you've got here are around list and staged. We've got this currently in list mode, which means that we're able to identify how many fields we want to display at any one time. We can randomize those. I choose not to generally randomize because I typically will put the questions that are of greatest importance to us at the top and then from there working the way down the list from a priority point of view. Um, one of the key things I like to do is definitely only display empty fields. Um, I don't want to ask the question again and again necessarily. So it is feasible that some of you may well have answered all of these questions, which means that you'll only see what you see here at the top of the form. And then would you like an SMS reminder? And if so, what's your cell phone number? Okay, so that's that's it's as simple as that so from a build point of view sorry if we go back here uh you've got progressive profiling here you can see it's grayed out because i've already actually got it added but like any of these as you drag any of these uh, into the center of the page you would do the same with progressive profiling and initially starts off with just that teal colored box that you can see and then it's a matter of taking any contact fields that you want to grab um, let me find one just for fun. Let's say beverage choice. That's always a fun one, isn't it? And so beverage choice can be added. And there it is. It's now in there. Now, the other thing you can do uh, is control whether or not that particular question is required. Sometimes you you want to play around with that. They don't have to be required. It's nice if people answer them. That's great. Uh, and the usual suspects there in relation to options that you've got for any sort of field in a particular form. So that's how you add progressive profiling to your form. And then once you're done and you're happy with that, then of course you want to save it as a template. All right, so what's new and what's coming with release 22C? So a couple of key things, there's it's quite a bit uh, buried in the release information, but a couple of the ones that really jumped out at us that I think are going to make people really happy, uh, certainly is this one. So many of you will, I'm sure, have probably put a mail to link in an email at some point or even on a landing page where it may be, um, you know, click here to email XYZ person or department directly. And so here you can see it might be admin at acme.com. Um, so you've been able to do that for a long time. That's not a new function. That's something that you can do today. What's changed, though, is the fact that these will now be tracked. So when people click on that, that will be a trackable link that will be available to you from an insight reporting point of view. Uh, same with telephone numbers, which I think is also fantastic. Um, and for some of you, perhaps the FTP servers, probably not more, probably the least common out of those three. But certainly being able to deliver a campaign where maybe that campaign's core objective is for an individual to click on a phone number to call their respective account director uh, with any queries. In the past, you had to rely on any feedback from sales as to, hey, was that effective? Did you receive any phone calls? Um, now you'll be able to report back to sales the amount of times uh, those telephone numbers were clicked on. So hopefully that is good news. What else is coming? So just this one is really just a data retention update for you. So. What if I would like to keep raw form data or submission data for longer than 25 months? So what Eloqua is saying now is that the 25-month data retention policy will be in place for form submission data in Insight, okay? So if you're accessing reports today in Insight, they will actually have data in there that is older than 25 months. However, once release 22C comes out, um, that will no longer be the case. The oldest that you'll be able to get to is 25 months worth of data in Insight. And I emphasize in Insight, different to looking at the form in Eloqua under form submission data two different places where that data is kept, okay? So please be aware of that. Um, if there's anything currently sitting in Insight that you know that you're going to want, um, now would be the time to go in and potentially export that data going back to whenever you want to go back to. Um, so hop onto that one before the release arrives. Now, 
if anyone needs any help or information or a bit of clarity around that one, please feel free to contact Marketing Cube. Uh, we'd love to be able to offer some assistance there if that's appropriate. You can use your QR, uh, use your phone to scan the QR code or simply email support at marketingcube.com.au. So for those who are looking very much at the CRM world of things integrated with Eloqua, you have all of your campaigns going backwards and forwards with campaign members and key activities. Um, I'm primarily here thinking probably more towards the Salesforce uh, type customer, Salesforce CRM customer um, and the campaign object and, and that integration, et cetera. You will know that there has been a little bit of a glitch sometimes with CRM campaign IDs from the CRM coming into Eloqua. And then if people make changes at the wrong time, it, it can get a bit fuzzy. Um, this is being rectified uh, with these changes that are coming in place with 22C. So nothing that you need to do necessarily, but what you will experience is a more robust and sticky campaign ID coming in uh, from the CRM. So that's a good thing. Um, the Salesforce CRM app. So <clears throat> the app will automatically truncate the campaign name to avoid any unnecessary data sync errors. So some of you may know, um, I, this happens to me quite a bit, I will get a little bit verbose with my campaign name in Eloqua on the campaign canvas. And then when I get into the CRM, uh, I notice that it's been truncated, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes can cause a little bit of a glitch uh, in for a range of different things that again uh, is being uh, corrected, I suppose, uh, is probably the best thing. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% clear on what that's going to look like until we get uh, 22C. Um, but uh, if there's anything unusual about that, I will certainly let you know. So next month, uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. Uh, next month, we'll be diving into the campaign canvas and we're going to round off the year for what is it, September, October, November. November will be our last user group for this year. We'll be back at the end of January next year. Um, so it'll be Campaign Canvas. We'll then do the email design editor. And then the last one in November will be the landing page and form design editors together. Random figure for you. Did you know Eloqua users globally create more landing pages than they do emails? That's an interesting stat, right? So if you're not using landing pages and forms, got to kind of ask the question, why is that? Why is it so many Eloqua users globally find such great value uh, from using landing pages? So we'll try and help you understand more about that and a few tips and tricks on the design editor as well. And But next month is Campaign Canvas. So would love to have questions. Um, it will be a very hands-on type of exercise, probably minimal slides. Uh, and we'll spend most of our time in the campaign canvas looking at the individual elements, looking at the configuration and what they can do and giving you some examples of, of how you might use them. Because so I would imagine for most people, you probably use the same type of elements most of the time. Um, but there's a whole range of elements there on the campaign canvas that can do some pretty cool things. So uh, we just want to make sure you're aware of those extra benefits. But that brings us to a close. Uh, we're a little bit early, which is kind of nice. Uh, I appreciate it. it's nine o'clock in New York and just after lunch in Europe. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate you making some time and you'll hear from us uh, in the next week or so. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day and we'll be in touch shortly. Thank you. <laughs>